The hydrohalogenation of alkynes is a Markovnikov selective reaction that involves the addition of H plus and X minus across the atoms of a carbon-carbon triple bond. Interestingly, this reaction is anti-stereospecific. It only gives the product in which the hydrogen and X add in an anti-fashion. This means it probably doesn't involve a vinyl cation intermediate and occurs through something that's much more like a type 2 mechanism despite the absence of a lone pair on the electrophilic atom. The resulting products are known as alkenyl halides, and while these are useful organic compounds in their own right, we can convert them further using excess hydrohalic acid to give geminal alkyl dihalides, which contain two halogen atoms connected to a common carbon atom, and in the case of a terminal alkyne, a pendant CH3 group. This reaction occurs with Markovnikov site selectivity, and we can see that in the scheme below by noting that X the halide anion that acts as a nucleophile in the mechanism ends up connected to the more substituted carbon of the terminal alkyne. This might suggest a mechanism involving a vinyl cation, since HX is a strong acid, so protonating through electron flow like this seems reasonable. On the other hand, we've seen Markovnikov selective reactions that don't involve the formation of an open carbocation. The most famous of these in an alkene context is cohalogenation using something like Br2 and an alcohol. In this reaction, the nucleophile, methanol, ends up connected to the more substituted carbon, and bromine, the electrophile, to the less substituted carbon. This is a Markovnikov consistent product, since the group that acted as nucleophile ends up connected to the more substituted position. That's what we're observing here as well. So Markovnikov site selectivity alone isn't enough for us to determine that this reaction involves an open carbocation. Evidence against the vinyl carbocation intermediate is that the reaction is anti-stereospecific. Let's look back at the cohalogenation example, which is also anti-stereospecific. The new carbon-oxygen bond and carbon-bromine bond are formed on opposite sides of the plane of the, of the starting alkene. Cohalogenation involves a type 2 mechanism and the intermediacy of a holonium ion. The fact that this reaction avoids a carbocation intermediate and proceeds through a holonium ion intermediate suggests that hydrohalogenation of an alkyne also avoids a carbocation intermediate. There's good reason to expect this based on the instability of these intermediates. Furthermore, the nail in the coffin for a type 1 mechanism, in this case, is that one, two rearrangements do not occur, and we would certainly expect vinyl cations, which are unstable, to rearrange whenever possible to more stable cationic products. Plus, the reaction is second order in the hydrohalic acid, which would not occur if protonation were the key first step of this process and were the slow step. The fact that the reaction is second order in HX suggests that two molecules of HX, or intermediates derived from HX, such as X minus, are involved in the mechanism. What we can conclude from all this is that the mechanism of hydrohalogenation of an alkyne involves a very unique elementary step called termolecular electrophilic addition that involves protonation at the same time as nucleophilic addition by X minus. X minus adds to the alkyne at the more substituted position, because this is the position with greater positive charge, at the same time as a proton is transferred to the less substituted position. This may look a little bit strange, but one thing to note about it that may make it seem a little more familiar is that this is the microscopic reverse of E2 elimination. Way back in discussions of the elementary steps, we remarked that the reverse of E2 is an elementary step that we won't look at in too much detail. This ADE3 step is that step, and we can see why it's relatively rare. It involves three molecules coming together at once, which is difficult in an entropic sense. This single elementary step, this single elementary step results in the anti-addition of X and H across the alkyne pi bond, and it accounts for all the observations we've seen so far. The anti-stereospecificity, the Markovnikov site selectivity, since more partial positive charge will be located on the internal rather than the terminal carbon, analogous actually to the holonium ion case up here, where the more substituted carbon bears more partial positive charge, and the second order in HX kinetics and the lack of 1-2 rearrangements in this reaction type. Addition of HX across an alkyne generates an alkene, which is susceptible to further addition. Thankfully, however, because X is inductively withdrawing, X is a halogen atom, right, so it's going to withdraw electrons from the alkene, it makes the product alkene less reactive than the starting alkyne. 
that is reactive as a nucleophile. This makes it possible to isolate the alkenyl halide product when we use only one equivalent of HX. If we want a second addition to take place, we can force it to using two equivalents or an excess of the hydrohalic acid. Addition of a second equivalent of HX across the alkenyl halide product occurs with the same site selectivity to give a geminal alkyl dihalide in which two halogen atoms have connected to the more substituted carbon of the terminal alkyne and two hydrogens have connected to the less substituted carbon of the terminal alkyne starting material. This product is a geminal alkyl dihalide since both halogen atoms are connected to a common carbon.